I think precision farming is the use of technology to monitor what's going on in a crop to improve the way in which we manage it. And that often means uh, responding to spatial variability, but also uh, effectively monitoring what's going on so that we can control that process much better. The key message, I guess, is that it's, it's good best practice. It's good practice. It's doing things more accurately. It's targeting your inputs. It's particularly with nitrogen. It's putting nitrogen where it's required, absolutely precisely, and that clearly is going to, you know, helps from from a nitrate leaching environmental point of view. It, it helps to target pesticide use, target exactly where it's where it's where it's required, and and of course that will reduce overall pesticide loadings. Well, obviously. No farmer's going to go into it unless there's um, some bottom line benefits. It's got to pay for itself. Um, but there are a lot of other benefits as well. If we can make the process more efficient, then we get environmental benefits as well as bottom line benefits. But you can break those down because the benefits will be different for different farmers depending upon what sort of conditions you're farming under, what your soil type's like, what, what your variation particularly is like. You know, you'll get different benefits from different parts of precision farming depending on where you are and what you're doing. First of all, it allows us to make a, a big leap in productivity with the kind of machines that we've got. Because whilst there's no doubt about it, machines have got more productive over the years, but the, uh, the level of increase in productivity has probably not been that high. It's a little bit here, a little bit there, whereas we can make a major leap forwards if we can improve the accuracy in which these machines will work in the field. So, for example, the big thing for us over the last few years has been uh, guidance systems. Now, the thing about guidance systems is that we can reduce dramatically the amount of overlap on a machine working in the field. So, for a tractor working in the field, we can reduce the overlap by around about 10% on a tillage implement. And then also for a combine working in the field, we can reduce the amount of overlap when the machine's cutting to, again, around about the 8 to 10% mark. So, we can increase the productivity of the machine dramatically. And that's important. That's why a customer might want to buy a new machine is because they want to increase the productivity get more out of that machine is important oh i think the main driver undoubtedly has been uh, guidance has been the development of reliable relatively cheap satellite based navigation systems um, because that has enabled uh, guidance of uh, field machinery to overcome things like overlaps to make sure you get tram lines at the right distance um, and that's been the real thing that has transformed precision farming in the last decade from something that was stuttering, if I'm honest, uh, to now something that is a, a mainstream part of our agronomy. We introduced telematics into the UK to help farmers become more efficient with their mainly harvesting operations initially. The system is a remote, remote management tool which allows customers to see what the machine is doing, not only in real time, but also allow to log every minute that the machine is switched on so they can then separate those times out into whether they're combining, turning on the headland, and all of that sort of thing. If you look traditionally at how people have combined, they've combined the same way perhaps for 20, 30 years. And funnily enough, it works for them. Harvest always gets finished each year. But maybe there's a better way. But you don't know there's a better way unless you can actually measure it. So with telematics, they're able to measure it and plot one year against another, compare how they're getting on. Are they average compared to everyone else in the UK in, in things like turning time, waiting for trailers? Or are they better or worse? If they're worse, perhaps they can improve the way they manage their harvest. We've seen improvements of up to about 16% in gained extra hours combining. The machine doesn't run for any longer, but they spend more time being productive combining and less time waiting for trailers, moving between fields and that sort of thing. I think what we're trying to do is to, we're trying to measure what the crop is doing. Images is one way of doing it, and you can do imaging from satellites, from aircraft, or you can start to use sensors that are closer to the crop. And I have to say, from my perspective, I think that uh, as we go forward, we are going to use a combination of those, but particularly looking at sensor technology mounted on uh, field equipment to monitor how that crop is responding, not just to spatial variability, but to the season as well. Because you know, the big advantage that we're gonna get with precision farming technology is to say, how is that crop doing this year? What should we be doing about it? How can we optimize its performance? 
An RTK system is a method of steering a tractor automatically, extremely accurately and repeatably in the same position. Uh, it works by collecting GPS data on the roof of the tractor cab, but also traditionally on a base station, correction data for that GPS position to make sure that it really is accurate. And that's sent by radio to the tractor so that the two bits of information are then gelled together and the tractor is made to steer in exactly the right position. I think the area that we've yet to tap into is the one of uh, integrating precision farming with the whole management system. You know, we still rely, particularly in spraying, and you know I'm, I'm a man who's interested in spraying, we still rely on the pen to keep records of spray operations when we've now got some very sophisticated technology. So I think we'll start to see uh, better record keeping, better management, um, and a way of demonstrating compliance. Now, I, I know that that you know, is also seen as, as a spy in the cab, but I think we've got to see the positive side of that. It's a way of controlling and demonstrating what, what, what's happening. So I think as we go forward, we'll see better management, uh, better record keeping. I think we'll see better um, interfaces with the way in which this technology is presented to the user. You know, we've got some relatively sophisticated stuff here, but we've got to make it so that the user can use it in a relatively easy, uh, a user-friendly way. And I think that's, that's the other change that's happened in the last five years, is that you now don't need to be a computer whiz kid to actually use this sort of stuff. And that, I think, will get better too, so that we'll get a better interface into the ways in which we go. I think one other thing is that sensors and electronics are getting cheaper all the time. Um, and we will see increasingly the import of sensing systems and computing systems, which are a lot of what we see here today is based on. That's going to continue to, to grow. Um, and so our sensors will get smarter and our control systems will get cleverer.